Okay, so today's daf is daf Hey in Baba Kama, as we learned for Achim of Chol Beis Yisrael and some of Shibya, and also for the Elias Nishama, my mother-in-law, Chai Rachel Bas Chaim Akiva Halevi. Ephraim, is today. Ephraim, my yeah. shver, my is also today. Chaim Gisbert. Oh, also today. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll learn Chaim with Rabbi Shlomo. What's his name? Chaim Ben Zvi. Chaim Ben Zvi. Chaim Ben Zvi. Chaim Ben Zvi. Okay. I I remember him. I remember him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time, Mike. What? Yeah. Thirty some. Yeah. 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 Thirty seven years. Yeah. All right, uh, he's Shem Shev and Aliyah, and everybody should have a Yeshu and Rufur. So from the very top of the page, what are we discussing? <clears throat> he said that there were four of us that Zika mentioned in our mission. Rav Oshie added, said, added another nine uh, for a total of 13. And his idea was, we said, why didn't the Tanakhama use his? Because the Tanakhama is only talking about Nezokim damages that your possessions, your assets do, your animals, not you yourself. Rav Oshie was talking about things that you yourself do. The kind, four kinds of shomrim and the uh, nazikim that a person uh, he damages another person's chayef too, which is nesik sari b'shevus and boshes. Okay, then we have Rav Chia who said there's a total of 24. He added on 11 more uh, to the 13 that uh, Rav Oshia had said. And the Gemara says right away, okay, the Gemara and yesterday said so. Um, he has the 13 that Rav Oshia said plus his 11. So the Gemara said Rav Oshia, why doesn't he include the 11 of Rav Chia? The Gemara said, well, because Rav Oshi is only talking about this, this of, of where you pay the principal, not where there's a knas. The knas, look, he's not talking about knas. Okay, well, what about Ganav and Goslin? Ganav and Goslin, they pay, the Goslin pays principal, the Ganav also pays principal when he himself is moda. Even if he was found uh, to be a, 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 a burglar, and he burgled him in the night, but he was moda himself, he also pays mama. So why don't you list those? In other words, Ganav and Goslin were part of the extra 11 that Rafia added on. So why didn't Ravoshia mention them? So he said, well, he does mention them indirectly because he says Shomachinam, and a Shomachinam whose towing time is gone, if a person that you gave somebody to, uh, you gave somebody to uh, a person to guard something for you, he didn't pay him. He was just a standard Shomachinam, and he's only responsible for Shia, for negligence. But let's say he claimed that it was stolen from him. So that's also included in Gnev and Aved, or some that it was robbed, or that it was uh, bur burgled from him. So that's also, Shemachim also lists that too. So why does Rafia mention both? Rafia says, uh, said, adds on Ganav and Gazan, even though he also includes Ravoshia's Shemachim. And the answer is, well, he talks about there's two kinds. There's a, uh, there's a Goslin, there's a Goslin that came into where the money came into your end legitimately when you were the guard, or when you were just a guard, a Shomer, and then you claim that it was stolen. And then there's Mona that came to Esau, we actually stole it. So he says there's two different kinds. Fine. So again, we're dealing with all these issues. Adam Zomerman says the Gemara at the top of the page in Dapei. Adam Zomerman, the Mono listing. Well, if you're saying Ramoshi only lists things which are straight principle, not Knasso, what's the definition of a Knas? In the Torah, Rashi tells us a beautiful Rashi. It tells us when you when you know something is a knas, when you pay more than the damage, right? When they say uh, here they have, uh, uh, I think courts here sometimes they treble the damages, right? The damages are hundred thousand dollars, and as a fine they pay, make it three hundred thousand. Well, the damages are hundred thousand. You're paying more than the fine, more than the damage. That's a fine. That's a knas. Or if the Torah says there's a, a specific amount. 50 shekels for an ones or mafata, 100 shekels for moti shemen. When there's a specific amount, it's not, then it's not the, if it's, if it's uh, dependent on the damages, then it depends what the damages. It could be a dollar, two dollars, four ninety nine. It could be any amount, a million dollars, a million or one dollar, whatever the damage is assessed to be. But if the amount that you pay is more than the damages, then it's a knas, it's a fine. Or if the Torah says specifically, it's a fixed amount, like the case of moti shemra. So the Morris says, Adam Zobman, that's mumum. What is it? Why is it Mama? Adam Zom, what is Adam Zomman? I claim that you stole $100, and it turns out that I was lying, me and another guy. We were two Adam. And they said, Imari some you were with us in Las Vegas that day, so I couldn't have seen you steal the $100, and I have to pay you the $100, right? Now, see some question. That's Adam Zomman. Well, that's straight money. It's not a knas. So why doesn't he list that? Ravoshia said, why didn't I list the extra 11 or Chia? Because he's talking about knasso. I'm only talking about Mumman. Adam Zomman is Mumman listening. Yes, the Savlik of Akiva, the Amr, Aim Mishalman Apiasmo. No, 
And the answer is he holds like Rabbi Kibu says that they don't pay if they admit it themselves. And if they don't, if they admit it themselves, meaning what does that mean? They were found to be Adam Zomer. What happened? Reuben and Shimon says that Yankel stole hundred dollars. Then it turns out Reuben and Shimon were Adam Zomer. Two other Adam came along and said, "You were with us in that town, different place in Las Vegas on that day. You couldn't have known." So then there's a responsibility for Reuben and Shimon, the false witnesses, to pay Yankel the hundred dollars that they wanted him to pay. Fine. Now before they actually uh, paid the money. They went to another court and they admitted that we were found to be Adam's own in somewhere else, then they don't have to pay. Amish Alman Miasma, which means that's motive of Knas's plot to that's considered a Knas, because another aspect of Knas is not a, one aspect of Knas is that it's usually more than that it's more than the actual damages. Another aspect, it could be a fixed amount. So here, even where it's not a fixed amount, another aspect could be if your motive of Knas, a rule is motive of Knas's potter. So if here, right, the key holds that Amos Shalman al Piatzman, if their motive themselves that they were found to be Adam Zomen somewhere else, they don't have to pay. That shows also that it's a knas. It's a third characteristic of a, of a knas, another kind of a knas. So even though you pay the actual, even though the amount to pay is the actual damages, it's not 50 shekels or 100 shekels or more than the damages, but a rule of knas is Amos Shalman al Piatzman, motive of knas is potter. So if you hold, like a key holds Amos Shalman al Piatzman, that means that. Adam Zom is also Knas. So that's where Raboshia doesn't list it like, uh, like Rafhia lists. Rafhia lists a total of 24. And Raboshia says, I'm only listing the 13 that are straight damages, straight principle, not Knas. Esau of Akiva says, so so, wait a minute. If we're saying over here that Raboshia holds like Rabakiva, so listening to Trey Gavin Shore, you should also call two different kinds of shore. Why? Because shore, in some ways, there's two different kinds of shore. We said before. Why don't you list two kinds of shore? Well, because uh, there is no difference if a shore damages a person, uh, a person who damages, we said, but what we said before, a Voshia Nami, a tunnel the autumn. It says, Trey Gavin Adams, autumn, the, uh, if an autumn hurts another autumn, if a, if a man hurts man, he pays the five Tashlum, and autumn does shore. So why, why don't you list a shore also, two different kinds of shore? The answer is, Bishlam, autumn does shore, he pays different amounts. But sure, what's the difference if a short damages a short or, or short damages autumn? They only pay, he only pays the Nezek. Well, according to, if you hold like a Bekiva, if Roshi holds like a Bekiva, why doesn't he say also like a Bekiva? Well, there should be two kinds of shore. Why? Listen, a short Azak shore, but listen, a short Azak autumn, because they are two different lachas. The Tanar Bekiva, and we're going to see later on, uh, it's, uh, later on in this, in and that for Lamed Gimel. Motor of the Bekiva holds, Aftam Shechaba Ba'ada, Mishalim, but Moser, Nezek Shalom. Let's say a person gets into a fight with a with a cow. You know, the cow attacks him and gets into a fight, and um, the person hurts the animal. And the animal hurts the person. So wherever the damage is greater, that party has the damager has to pay. But how much does he pay? Rabbi Kiva holds af tam shechavu ba'adam. Even though he's a tam, a tam meaning the first three times that he gores, he only pays chazi nezek. But if he hurts a person, mishalim b'moser nezek shalom, he pays. The extra amount, then there's the difference. He pays the, the difference between them. Then there's, let's say he damaged a person to the tune of $100. And the person damaged the animal to the tune of $75. The difference being $25. So the owner of the cow has to pay the person $25. Okay. And he pays Nezek Sholem. Doesn't pay Chatsi Nezek. Remember, normally a time pays Chatsi Nezek. Yeah, pays the full amount. So there is a difference. Then between shore that's masik, a shore, a short time that's masik, another shore only pays chatsi nezik, and he damages a person, he pays nezik shalim. So there's a difference there too if he holds like Rebekiva. So the Gemara could say, well, maybe he holds like Rebekiva in one aspect. When it comes to Adam Zoman, he holds Adam Zoman as a knas. When it comes to this, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say it like the Gemara is wanted to do, but the Gemara gives a better answer. The Gemara says, a tafre Rebekiva exists. Rebekiva broke his own fist, so to speak. Like he banged down folks' meaning. He qualified what he said. Why? The Tanya Bekiva says on that same daf later on on Lamed Gimel, Tanya Bekiva Omer Yochal Af Tam Shechav Abadim Yishalim Min Haaliyah. You might think that of a Tam who damages a person, even though we said that he pays Nezek Shalei, but you might think that he pays from total assets. In other words, normally when a short Tam damages a short Tam or damages any any other animal, pays Chatsi Nezek. The chatzin net right half. So let's say he killed a uh, he killed an animal. He killed your dog. The shore killed a dog. Okay, uh, 
short time kill the dog. He only, and the dog's worth $100. So he only has to pay $50. Even the $50, he only pays from the value of the shore. Let's say the shore was only worth $10. You can't take more than the $10. He only pays from the shore itself. You don't pay from the assets. So he says, Aftam Aftam Mishalim. And he pays from all of the assets of the owner of the damage of the damager, Tamalomer, Ye Asolo Migufo. The Pasik and Lamaral, most of these uh, halachas are in Parakhafal, beginning of Mishpatim. So here it says in Pasik Lamaral, uh, is it Pasik Lamaral? Yeah. Oben Yigoch or Basigoch, the animal damages a person. Kamishpat has said, Ye Asolo. So Ye Asolo means that he's considered like a mu'e that he pays, and there's a Shalmi pays the full amount of the damages. But not the full amount. A Shor Mue, who's a, a a known, a well, a, you know, a well known. It's a proven in court that he damages. He goes around goring, so he has to pay Nezik Shalim, and he has to pay from the assets of the owner. Even if the animal's only worth two dollars, but he damaged a thousand dollars, he got to pay a thousand dollars. So the Mar says you might think also a Shor Tom that damaged a person should also pay out of the assets of the owner. That means Men Aliyah from all his assets. No. Yes, oh yes, he says Michel me from the from the Pulsic right above it that was talking about what he pays as a but he only pays out of out of the animal's worth. If the animal's not worth that much. So again, if the animal was worth ten dollars, the damager, and and he and he hurt a person to the tune of a thousand dollars, not killed him, because if he killed him, he pays cover, but he damaged a person to the tune of a thousand dollars of uh, doctor's bills, etc. Or, or or lowered his value, whatever. But he damaged him to a to the tune of a thousand dollars. You can only take ten dollars, right? And even that, you he pays Nezek Shalim the full amount, but only up to the value of the animal. So if the damager, the the animal that did the damage is only worth ten dollars, that's all you can get. That's the point. So even Rabbi Kiva does not say that a shore that damaged a person, sure damaged a person, pays Chatsi Nezek. Short damage, a, a, a short damage, another short pays chatzin nezik. Short damage, a person, or the kiva holds, right? Mishalim the most in he pays nezik shalim, pays it with another shalim. But even Rabbi Kiva qualifies that he doesn't always pay nezik shalim. He doesn't pay the full thousand dollars. He only pays it out of the value of the animal. Uh, it's no logic. It's, it's possible. There's no logic behind it. Okay, a person driving a car is a person, a person, a person driving a car. Uh, oh, if your animal was driving your car, then you could argue. But a person driving a car is always responsible for everything that he does, even if he's sleeping. He saw yesterday. Even if he's sleeping, you go to sleep here in the shul and you, you bang something, you broke something, you have to pay. So that's a person. But, a, but an animal is different. Now, why? Because when it comes to an animal, we say that an animal that damaged by goring, it's not normal for him to do that. So you couldn't, you can't hold the owner responsible. And um, uh, and and if he uh, did damage, you know, if he did damage, he, uh, he uh, the first three times he only pays half because it's like a knas, you know, it's like a knas that uh, it shouldn't be a total loss. So you know, they they counsel the person to be a little bit careful, but he don't have to be careful if he knows his animal's him. It's normal for your animal to eat somebody else's fruit if he's in somebody else's land, uh, property, right? It's normal for the animal to step on things. So you should have watched that, should have been careful. If you yes, sent your animal to somebody else's property and he stomped on something or ate something, that's shame the regal, you have to pay because you should have guarded. But if your animal's in the street, your animal was a nice puppy that you just got, you didn't know that it's gonna do any damage and he went and he bit somebody and he hurt somebody. So he has to pay. How much does he have to pay? So if he damaged other property, chatzi nezek. If he damaged a person, according to Bakiva, you pay nezek shalom, but only out of the value of the animal, based on, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Okay, so, so these are the points over here. We're trying, all this is trying to understand. Our Mishnah said four nezekin, four of us. Raboshi added on nine more that include the person doing damage. Our Mishnah is only talking about your animal doing damage. Unless you learn, like Rob, that Mava brings a person. But according to Shmuel, that we're going like, the four of the Mishnah, those are where your animal does damage. The 13, the extra nine that Raboshi adds, that's where your person doing it. Rafi adds 11 more that are based on Knas. So now the Gemara says, okay, so why didn't Raboshi say the other 11? Because those are Knasso. Okay, what about Onus Mafata, Vamotzi Shemra? 
The Motzi Shemer is really only Kna, so he doesn't add that one. That Rashi, uh, Rashi doesn't even have the gears of Motzi Shemer. Rashi just says, Onis and Mafata. Tosa says, if you have the gears of Mafata, it's mentioned Agabur Chabron Kabaros and Mafata. What do we mean? Onis and Mafata, if you, if you, let's say you rape, you rape a young girl, you have to pay 50 shekels. Rape or seduce a girl, you have to pay 50 shekels. Okay, different rules of Onis and Mafata. Onis, you have to marry her anyway. Mafata is only if you don't marry her, you pay 50 shekels, but whatever. No, no, one from the other. Gemara Absul says, says, my Mafata, like on Onis. Okay, so that's a Knas. It's a f- fixed amount, right? We said before, anything they pay more than the more than the damages, or you pay a fixed amount, that's a knas. But besides the knas, so you say your people think, oh, you rape the girl, you just pay 50 shekels and that's it. No, there's other things too. There's Boshe, says Pagam, she's worth less on the market. There's there's uh, doctor's bills. There's other things you have to pay too. So what about that? That's the money. So why don't you mention those two? Why didn't Rav Oshe, Rav Oshe, why didn't he mention the extra 11 of Rechia? Because Rechia is like my knas. Yeah, but Onus and Fata also involve damages. Onus and Fata, Motsi Shemra, the Mamonu list, why does Rav Oshe list those? It's Manusha. In Ezek, if you're talking about the damage, what, what do you have to pay besides the knas of the 50 shekels? You have to pay the regular damage because if you've injured this person, you've hurt this person, you attacked this girl, besides the fact that you raped her, that you have to pay the 50 shekels, you've also done damage to her. If you talk about, you know, Nezek, she's worth less, Tanale, he mentioned Nezek. Remember, Avosha mentioned the nine things that a person does damage over and above that of, a, of, of the four in the Mishnah. That Mishnah's talking about an animal doing damage because one of the, the four of the Shomrim and Nezek, Zahir, Yibushev, and Zabosha. So if you're talking about what, the onus of Mafata besides the 50 shekels, what's the mumun? What's the real uh, the, the real principal damage? It's not the, not the fine of 50 shekels. Well, one is that she's worth less. You, you decreased her value on the market. So Tunnelly, you mentioned Nezek, Zahir, you eat Zahir. Tunnelly, you also mentioned Zahir. You have to pay, you have to assess what the pain is. Uh, if you're talking about the shame to her and to her family, totally mentioned. If you're talking about gam, that's nezek. When you say nezek sari poshevus and boshes, you already mentioned. Uh, you know, if it's, you, he's assuming that there's no ripui over here, but if there is ripui, if she had to be taken to the hospital and pay for the doctor, etc., uh, she would. If there was loss of work, also. But if you got high nezek, what do you say? Knasa. The 50 shekels, but Knossa Lokamar, we're not talking about this. Again, Ravoshia answers that the reason he doesn't mention Onus and Mafata, uh, Motsi Shemra is clearly only Knas. He's not talking about Knas, but Onus and Mafata, even though they have some real principal damages, you know, uh, uh, assessed there, those are included in the ones that he mentioned. That's Xavri Pushim Boshes. What about the other ones that Rukhia mentions? Amatame, Bamadame, Manasach. Let's say you're Matame, somebody else's Taharos. You have some. Food of theirs that he wants to eat the state of Tara and you're metamia. Or metamia, you mix his hulin with truma. Now you can't eat unless you're a coin. Or menasach, you make his wine into nyanesach. That's mumu. You've done a damage to him. Why doesn't Rafoshi mention those? Listening, why doesn't he mention those? He says, Manavshach. Why? Either way, it doesn't make sense to mention it. He has a chain in a kishme hezek. There's a famous machlok, we're going to see, we had it again, we have it elsewhere. A hezek which is not visible, it's intangible, you can't see it. Right, you, you normally damage you see the thing is broken, the car is hurt, the car is damaged, the person has a broken leg. But there's damages that you can't see. For example, if it's tame, you can't see if something is tame. It's a spiritual thing; you don't see it. It's an intangible. Is that considered hezek? You have to pay for or not? So, if hezek shenidik or shmei hezek, he mentioned nezek. If you count the nezek, he got Rabosha mentioned nezek zari b'shemes boshes. He has shenidik or if it's not nezek, right? So then it's a knas. Why would you have to pay? If Hezek Shenanik is not a Hezek, so why would I have to pay? If I, if I metame your stuff, or I mix it with truma, right? I mix it with truma. Now, now you can't eat it because there's truma in there. And you're not a coin. But uh, it looks the same to me, right? It looks the same to me. It doesn't, you don't see it. Well, is that called a Hezek that I have to pay for or not? If it's a Hezek that I have to pay for, then it's included in Nezek. He mentioned Nezek. If it's not, if if it's not, if it's not a hezek, and the only reason I have to pay is like a knas, the rabbi said it's a knas. Yes, you can't see the damage, but you've you've heard him. You can't eat that food now. You can only sell it to a coin for a diminished value, um, and it's a knas. So he doesn't. So again, Ravoshi says I'm not talking about knas. So again, if it's a hezek, if it's shmei hezek, then I've included it in, in nezek. If it's lo shmei hezek, then it's a knas. I'm not talking about a knas. Okay. Uh, so that that takes care of all of all eleven. Additional things that Rav Chia mentioned over and above Rav Why don't Rav mention them? Because they are all knas. 
And if they are, if some aspects of them are cash or principal, the principal damages, he mentioned Nesik already. Lamex of Rafia. Now, Rafia, who does mention though, Metame, Medame, Menasa, where you can't see it. I made the eye into the eye nest, where you can't see it. It's intangible. So, <clears throat> uh, Rafia, who does mention it, so may, apparently, Lamex of Rafia has a shade of or Lo Shmei Hezek. Maybe oh, it's not Shmei Hezek. This Shmei Hezek, Atar Lein Hezek. Rafia said, Rafia said 24, the four of our Mishnah, the extra nine of Ravosha, which includes Nezek. And then he includes Metame Medam Nasach as part of his extra 11. So the Chorah, he must hold that Hezek Shein and Iker's low Shmei Hezek. Because if it's Shmei Hezek, he already mentioned Nezek. So the Chorah, that's the proof that he holds Hezek Shein and Iker's low Shmei Hezek. And it's really because of a Knas. So it's the Gemara, no, no proof from there. As the Shmei Hezek, I'm talking about Nezek. The answer is no, Tan Hezek, the Minkah, Tan Hezek, the Minkah, we had before. He might mention things which are uh, like in case where you, you talk about Chia mentioned um, Ganav and Goslin, where where you stole it, Lechachila, you took it for Isser, or Shomer Chinam, where you took it on Chila without an Isser, but you claim later on Ganav and Goslin. Same way over here, he'll say he includes damages which are obvious, which are tangible, you could see them, and he includes things which are not tangible. So he might hold that Hezek, Shane, and Nicker, Shmei Hezek, it's not a Knas, but why does he include if he already mentions Nezek? He mentions Nezek where you see it, and you mentioned Nezek where you don't see it, like Matam and Manasa. So you can't prove what Rukhi holds about that. Okay, now in general, we have a rule throughout Shas that whenever you mention a number, three of these, ten of these, nine of these, that excludes other things. Dafka these nine, Dafka these ten. Our Mishnah said there are four of us Nazikan, right? Four of us Nazikan. So why does he say four? To exclude Ravoshias. He's not talking about the 13 Ravoshia because he's talking about all the Our Mishnah's only talking about damage that your animal did. So the Gemara says, look, look, look. now the Gemara says like this. Uh, Tana, Bishlam of Tana be done. Our Tana mentioned four. Minyana, why do you say four? Lemut at Ravoshia. He says, I'm not talking about Ravoshia. Roshi added nine more, which are human damaging. We're talking about animal damaging. Your animal damage. Okay. That's why he says four to exclude the, the other nine Ravoshia. Ravoshia says 13. Why do Ravoshia say 13? To exclude the 11 of Ravchia. Ravchia says this 24. Ravoshia, Tanamiyana, Lemuti Ravchia. Because he says, I'm only talking about money damages, straight straight principal damage, no knas. El Aminyana to Ravchia, Lemuti Mai. Why does Ravchia say 24? Just list them. When he says 24, it's not he's excluding something else. What is he excluding? El Aminyana to Ravchia, Lemuti Mai. Lemuti Moser Mafago, to exclude a Moser Mafago. A Moser, what's a Moser? We know a Moser is a person who hands over a Jew to the guy, right? So it could have been for murder or for money. This guy owes, uh, you know, what's the thing? He used to be in America that if you tell the IRS this guy owes you some money, you get 10% or something like that. I don't know if they still have that rule. That's a Moser. <laughs> You're handing him over to the authorities, you know. Okay, a citizen's arrest. So a Muslim Moser, pardon? An informer, exactly, an informer, right? So Lemute uh, Moser, an informer, uh, that that that's not included. We're not including that. We're not including that. He says there's 24 types of damages, including animals, including humans, including Knasso. We're not talking about Moser or Mafagel. Mafagel, we know, is where you ruin somebody's animal, right? You ruin a carbon. Guys bring a carbon. The coin brings it with a machshava. Chutz Lizman or Chutz Lamakom, that makes it piggle. Okay, you're damaging him there. So why aren't those mentioned? But let's say, why doesn't he mention those two? It's a mafago because we're not talking about kachim. You're right. That is a kind of a damage. And if a coin did it on purpose, he would have to pay for the animal to bring another carbon. Elamosa my time below. It's Tony Shani Mosa the Dibur, the Dibur Lakmar. It's not that you wouldn't have to pay. Maybe the rabbis would make you pay a knas. You're turning over a Jew to the Goyim. Uh, you should have to pay. Except we're not talking about it's simply words. We're talking about actions. You stole something, you did something. Actions that you did actually did something, not words. But Moshe Shema Dibur, Moshe Shema is only involved deeper. You claim that your wife wasn't a virgin when you, and she after she claimed that she was. Biktani, that was mentioned. The emperor's Dibur de Semaisa. That's Dibur de Semaisa because it involved having Bia. He had Bia with his wife, and it turned out that she wasn't a virgin. So he claimed that she had committed adultery. Of course, she's only killed if there's Adam and Asra and actually proved that she committed adultery. But the point is, it's words that involve a Maisa. But Adam Zoman Dibur, Adam Zoman is simply words. I said that uh, we, Reuven and Shimon said that Yankel stole money. That all they did was say words and you include that one. So why didn't you include Moser also, which is words? 
right? In Zoman Dibur, the Lesbian Maisu, Uptani, that was mentioned. And in Hassan, I forgot the Lesbian Maisu, even though there's no Maisu, Rahmona Karim said, Hashem called it a Maisu. Right? The Chesed says, Vasisimo Kashir Zamam Lassos Laachid. He wanted to do, to do, to do something. All he said was words, but it's also considered a Maisu. Okay. So that's why Moser, the uh, Piggle is not mentioned because that's talking about Kachim. And Moser is not included because it's simply a Maisa with no action whatsoever. In the case of um, Moser Shemra, there's a Maisa of Bia that involved. In the case of Adam Zoman, the Torah calls it a Maisa. So Vishal Matani Didan, Torah Avos Machal Dika told us. It says Avos. Why does it say Avos? Because th- there are told us, as we said, uh, an Av is the boar. You dig a pit in Rosh Hashanah. What's a tolda? You left a package there or a knife or something else, some other obstruction that was going to cause uh, damage to, uh, to an animal that, uh, that fell on it. Uh, so there's toldas over there, as we said. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, goring and a regal is with his feet. Uh, a tolda is if the animal, um, the animal uh, you know, damaged something while he was walking in somebody else's property by his hair or bell or something on it. There's toldas. Elder of Chil, Rav Oshia, Avos Machal, Vikatoldos. There's Avos Machal, Mashmah, that are toldos. Told the same. What are the toldos? You, you mentioned these. These extra, actually, a total of 20 things, the extra nine of Ravoshi and the extra 11 of Rafi, a total of 20 additional things, and you call them Avos. Ravoshi said there's 13 Avos in the Zikin, and Rafi said there's 24 Avos in the Zikin. Why do you mention Avos? Are there Tolos there? Amar Vu, Kulan, Ka'avos. The reason he calls them Avos is not to show that there are Tolos, but rather Ka'avos Lashalim Mimeta, to tell you that when you pay, if you pay cash, fine, because cash is always good. But if you pay with assets like karka, you have to pay from the best of your karka. The shalom to tell you, just like others, just like the other four of us in Zika, you pay from the best. The same way, these other 20, you also pay from the best. My timer. Why? Why is that? What did it pay some? Asi tachas nasini shalom kesev. There are four words that it says by the other 20, the Ravoshia and Ravchia add on, which are which are similarly found by the four of us in Zika and in our Mishnah of Shore. Uh, shore, bore, mav, and hever that we find there also, which are, which what is it? Shore is like Karen or Rego. Uh, bore is a bore of pit. Mava, we said according, is is a shame. And uh, hever is ash. And by all those, we find the lotion of Tachas, Nesina, Yeshalim, or Kesa. Now we're going to take a look at the Rashi, the Rashi where the lines get wide for the first time, a little bit below, right? Even with Gilion Ashas, where the lines get wide, not all the way. Not the widest, but where they begin to quiet. Look at that mission. Look at that Rashi. Tachas Messina. The Bukuluk Siv, it either says either the word Tachas, like the mission, like the Gemara said, Tachas Messina, Yishalim or Kesef. It says, O Tachas, we're going to be Tachas, Tachas, Mishor, Mue. The Siv, this is made short, you pay short, Tachas, Shore. Mahasam and Meita, just like over there, when you pay short, you pay out of the best of your karka. The Ebus is going to see the best of your karka. The Gomer Mishain Brego, because you learn, how do you, why do you know, why does the Shore pay? Um, uh, uh, by, uh, by by the shore damages another shore. How do you know that he pays the best? Because it says tacha shore, and there you learn out me mate of the gomar me shame varego the sibe mate of sadeo a shame varego. If your animal goes shall be of the sun say here mate of sade mate of me shalom time you pay from the best. So just like shame varego, which are a kind of shore, pays out of the best. Afkan mate of she involves shalom karka lenizik bishvilo bishvil hazeko megbeim minus he pays from the best. That's what it means. That's that's if it says tachas because it says tachas by shore tachas shore you learn not shame from in shore you learn not shame brega which is a kind of shore, or it says nos of lashon of nesina that's the second word oh nesina the government nesina nesina mishor shenaga chas have a shore damage who gored and evet there it says over there he he says kesef shloshim shekel if a gore if a shore killed your evet can you pay thirty shekels to say ye tain la dona but lashon of nesina oh you right or the word yeshale. The Gomar Mishain Bregli says, Sham de Sibbe, mate of Carmo Yishalim. So it's mate of Sammate Kar Yishalme, Misham by Shane Brego. And it's over there, what? Yishalim, right? Uh, mate of, they say Yishalim. So if it says, and it says Shalim by the other, either one of, out of the 20, it says one of those Lashanas, either Tachas or Nesina, Yitain, or Yishalim, O Kesef, the Gami board, but by board it says Kesef Yashiv Livolov, Bamesi Alo. And the Arab Abbas, and all the Arab Abbas, we learn all the Abbas Deacon from Shane Drego. And then he goes on, Rashi goes on to explain by Shemachinim, by all those Lashanos, by Shemachinim, by uh, any of them, uh, Nezik, Sarvishas, all those things, 
you learn out because it says in all those cases it says one of those words either tachas or a variation of nasina like yitain or the word yishalim or kesef and by those by by uh, shore we said that the uh, you learn up from shem regular you pay mate of say mate of shalom you have to pay from best that's why Rav Oshia and Rav Chia call those twenty that they add on together. They call them avos to tell you that you pay make it from the best of your field if you're paying with with uh, with real estate. Then the Mishnah said, "Lori Ashur Kori Amava." Now, what does that mean? If you go back and look back at the Mishnah of the basement office. There's four of us in Zikin. Okay, we explained already that Shore means either according to Rav, it means all three Shane Regal and Karen. According to Shmuel, we really came out that Shore is Regal. Regal. First, it could be Karen also, but we came out that the, the later opinions that it's Regal. Bor, we know, is a pit. Mava, according to uh, Shmuel, is Shane. And Hever is a fire. Okay, then he says, Lo and Mava. The Shore is not like Mava. The Shore is not like the meaning. The Regal is not like, uh, um, it's not like Shane. And uh, Shane is not like Regal. Why, why does it, what is that purpose of saying all that for? What do you need all that? What is, just tell me, these are the four things. My comer, what are you trying to say there? What's the finish you're saying? What did you say this at all? What are you doing? This is not like that. Let's just say, let Hashem say one of those. Why don't you say one and you learn out the other ones from that? You learn out the other one from that. The answer is you can't. Why? Because each one has a different characteristic. You want to say uh, that uh, Mava, Mava has uh, Mava, which is Shane, has a uh, it's it, it has a no when it eats it. Okay, so if you would only say Shane, you couldn't learn now Rego from there because Shane is different because he's getting a no. There you have to pay your animals getting pleasure. You have to you're probably getting pleasure too because you have to feed it less, right? Uh, and Rego it has no pleasure. So maybe if it only say if your animal damaged somebody else's property in somebody else's yard by eating, you get pleasure there. There maybe you have to pay, but Rego maybe not. The same thing, you can't learn out one from the other. That's what I'm saying. Shore is not like Mava. Blar Mava Kamea Shore. And Mava, which is Shane, according to Shmuel, is not like Shore. Shore, which is Rego, it's uh, frequent. Whenever an animal walks, it's going to break anything in its path. That's frequently does damages. Shane, not necessarily. He may not eat it unless he's hungry. So you couldn't learn one from another. Okay, that's that's why that's the point is that's what he means. My kamar mamas of Shvei Rava hachem alif to rachmana chad of Yisim Yisrael hara amar chad amichad alif. You can't learn out one from the other, like we explained, right? Each one says you can't learn out one from the other, like we said on yesterday's daf, where we said uh, and Karen uh, Karen is kavanas lahazik or yeshen shekam lahazik. If you only had she, if you only had Karen, there is the animal wanted to do the damage. Shane, he didn't want to do the damage, and we said the same thing. Uh, Malia, Leroy Regal, Regal is a Zekamatsu, Shane is not a Regal, Zekamatsu, Shane is a no, and the other way not, so you can't learn one from the other. Then the Gemara goes on, we're at the two, two lines from the bottom of the page in the Gemara, and the and all, and these, both these things, which are what? Shore and Maba, however you learn Maba, right? Like Rob learns Maba is Adam, and, Sh- and uh, Shmuel learns that it's Shane, it, together with Shore, which is Rego, both of those are alive. They have Ruach Hayim. My Kamar, what's the point of that? What's the thing busy for My Kamar, I'm a So fine. So say, you can't learn out one. If you only had one, you couldn't learn out the other ones from that. Because each one has a different characteristic. But say two. Lift up Rahman Tati. Say two. But Taysi Yidich Man, learn the other one from them. You can't learn out one from two. Why? Because what are the two? If you say Shore and Mava, they both have life, right? So those things you have to pay for, but Bor and H don't, right? Bor and H don't. Uh, they don't apply. Oh, so then right, you can't learn on Amarava, and therefore the Gemara went on to so say you can't like H. Okay, and if you have H, even if you include H, that's why you have to say H. So why do you have to say Bor? If you have Shor, Mava, and Hever, why do you have to say Bor? Oh, because those are Derech, Le'ev, Hazik. Those things go and do damage elsewhere. The Shor, the person, if it's Mava, or the shame, or the fire goes and you start the fire, it goes over there. Bore, though, is stationary. It, it doesn't go and do damage somewhere else. So if I had to say all of them. Amar Abbas, Rav says an interesting thing. V'kulu, kishadas bor binayu, asikulu b'matzad. If you would say any of the ones in our mission, like Shane, Rego, Karen, any of them together with Bore, you could learn all the other ones from Bore. And Rashi explains the whole thing. Labar mi Karen. Except you, you could learn, how, if you only say Bore, the Torah would only say Bore. 
and one of the other ones, let's say Shane, right? Bor and Shane, or Bor and Rego. You could learn out all the other ones from there, except for Karen. Why? Why not Karen? All the other ones are muad, meaning they are forewarned, they're cautioned in advance, they're going to do damage, right? A, a Shane or Rego and somebody else's property is going to do, is a muad to do damage. It's going to damage when it walks through somebody else's property, either by eating or a step or, or, or uh, eating. Fire is a muad. You know, fire, you got to be careful, you know. Uh, you know, uh, oh, you can prevent forest fires, right? Fire is going to go do damage. Someone's a boar is also, it's a muad to do damage. You know it's going to damage. And they, but Karen is not because a normal animal does not gore automatically. An animal walks normally. An animal eats normally. Fire spreads normally. A boar is going to do damage normally. It's, it starts out ready to do damage. Not necessarily with, with, uh, with an animal. A lot of animals don't go around goring. So therefore, you can learn out Karen from there. Therefore, Karen had to say it. Other ones you can learn out. And Rashi explains, take a look at Rashi, uh, Rashi about 12 lines down on the page, still in the narrow area. Ik siv bor, the chad manach, we'll say bor in one of the other ones. Asikulu mehu meidach b'tzad ha'shav. Ik siv bor b'karen. Let's say say bor and Karen. Asi shen, you can learn out shen. Why? Hachi. Ma bor, bach bor shen dark alay l'chazik. Mach bor doesn't go damage elsewhere. It doesn't go out and do damage. It can't stationary. It's inanimate. It can't move. Chayiv, you're chayiv there. If the Torah would just say bor, and still you're chayiv, shame, the dark little house, shame, which goes and does damage, else, low cost, can certainly should be chayiv. Oh, but mala bor, she can't kill us, let's say, so omid le nezik. A bor is basically made to do nezik. As soon as it's there, it's it's going to do damage, right? Tomer b'shame, shame isn't necessarily made to do damage. Yes, it will do damage. It's a muid when it walks on somebody else's property, but it's not created for that purpose. It's 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 initial creation is not for damage. Okay, so look at Karen. Karen is not originally made for that, and yet you're chayiv. Because we're learning it out, everything from Bor and Karen. Mali Karen, she can us last, but the Karen has a disadvantage, as a characteristic that it, it, the animal had kabon had intended to do damage. Okay, well, Bor Yochir, Bor doesn't, can't have any intention because it's inanimate, right? It can't do damage. What's the common denominator of Bor and Hezek? That they do damage and you're responsible for them. So I'll be in Shane also. So you could learn out Shane and Rego and Rego. Uh, from Karen and Bor. And, and he goes on to say, the whole Rosh goes on to say, you can learn out everything from Bor with one of the other ones, except for Karen. If you had Bor, let's say, in Rego, you could learn out everything else, but you can't learn out Karen. Why? Because Karen, all the other ones are muad mitchiloso. From the beginning, they are set to do damage. You know you're sure you're, you're uh, you put your shore in somebody else's property, it's going to eat, it's going to walk. A boar also, if you make a boar, it's going to do damage. You, it's a mood, you understand, it's going to do damage. Same thing with a fire. Karen, not. That it's going to do damage with a horn, that's not necessarily. Karen Adifa, Karen is worse. All the other ones don't have to Rego, the animal doesn't have intention. He's just walking along. A shame doesn't want to do damage, just wants to eat, right? Aish and boar can't have Kabbalah Lahazik because they are inanimate. Whereas Karen, he had come out to damage, so maybe it's worse. So I feel Karen normally I'll see. So if that's the case, if you could learn out everything according to this Mandamar from a combination of uh, Bor and one of the other ones, including Karen, so why did Torah have to list them all? Lil Hosein, to tell me each one has a different halacha. Not only is their aspects different, but what? We said Karen, come on, uh, uh, Regel, Regel, is shchich azeko that it's normal that it, it it's very frequent that it does damage. Shane has ano right. Uh, all those things have different care. Bor is is uh, diff, is, is special because it's chilas olahazik. It has that character. It's chilas olahazik. It's made originally to do damage. What else could it do, right? Aish um, has ruach acher murabo. Everyone has a different characteristic. But why did the Torah have to say them all? Because they have different alochas. What are the alochas? Karen the chalik ben tam lemuay. Care if an animal gores, if it gores with its horn, uh, there's a difference between a tam and a mui. The first three times, you only have to pay chatzin nezik. It's a knas. Chatzin nezik, it's a knas because you're not responsible. You didn't think your animal's going to do damage, just like everybody who has dogs. They don't, ah, the dog's always nice, not going to do any damage until he's uh, been proven several times to bite, right? Um, so normally your animal's not going to do damage. So the chat, but if he's a mui, if he's been worn three times, then you're going to have to pay the home. So that's why the Torah says, Karen, they teach me this difference. Shane Varega was teach me because it says 
if your animal shilich has biro bia b'stei acher, you're only chayev for shame verego if your animal went at somebody else's property and do it. If your animal's walking in the street and you left your pottery in the street and the animal stepped on it, it's your problem. It's not the animal. The the the, the owner is allowed to. You're allowed to have cars and animals in the street, right? So your potter b'shesarab to tell me why did say shame verego? Tell me only b'stei b'stei acher. Only if he does damage in somebody else's field, not in the public property. Uh, bore, why does it say lift the boss to Caleb? Because it says, Kiftahish bore, the Nafal Shama Shor O Hamor. It says if you, if you open up bore in, in the street, the Nafal Shama Shor O Hamor, and what's the famous Russia? Shor below Autumn, Hamor below Caleb. Oh, if a person falls into the pit, he should have looked where you watch where you're going, buddy, right? You should have looked. It's not, you're not responsible. Uh, and the Hamor, you're not responsible for Caleb that fell in there. So the reason why he says the, the reason why the Torah tells you board the parsha to teach me lift your boss a kalim to pot to kalim or a muted machayvos kaver who says you chayv on kalim before lift your boss adam even though he doesn't hold even though he doesn't hold chamor below kalim but he holds a shor below adam that you're a, per, a person should have watched himself and, and you're not responsible if you open up a pit and a man falls in there he should have looked where he was going adam why does it tell me the case of adam the case is chayv bar bar to tell me that if a person damages somebody else he has to pay. Besides the Nezik that everybody pays, even for Shane, Rego, uh, Bor, and Aish, uh, he has to pay the other things of Tsar, Ripu, Shevis, and Boshes. Why does it tell me Aish? Why does it tell me Aish? Obviously, if I make damage, if I if I cause a fire and burn somebody else's uh, barn down, of course I have to pay. Lifter must have told me, tell me if something was hidden, I'm not high. For example, let's say I was... Uh, um, I was burning down some firewood in my yard for a good reason. I had to burn it down. I had to burn it for, for whatever reason. I was making charcoal or whatever. And the fire went and damaged somebody else's property. I should have known there's somebody else's property there, right? But let's say under his pile of corn or wheat, whatever, in the other guy's property, he also had some expensive, he kept his cash in there. <laughs> he kept his cash in there. You know, under there, he thought it was a good place to hide. So when it burnt down, okay, I have to pay for the wheat. Well, I, all had, I also had a million dollars of cash in there. Sorry, if it's hidden, you, I'm not responsible for that. Okay, that's what the point is, Aish, because it says, it says, as I go dish, something which you see, right? Something which you see. Rashi says, I'll show you, Shema Yibgadim, or he had clothes underneath the Tumor of Gadish. Potter Mavid, the Chsibbe, he says, Oh, Akoma, only the pile of, of you know, wheat or whatever. Uh, do you see it? To exclude something which is hidden. That's why he tells me the parsha of Aish. Rabbi Yudah the Bachayv on this Gitanish. Rabbi over there doesn't hold of that exclusion. He holds Yachayv even for something which is hidden underneath the pile. La suye mai, la suye licha nero b'sichzah. To include this, yes, I might be responsible. I understand. I burned down his pile of wheat. You know that was he was going to sell in the market. But let's say he just plowed his field, and now I singed his field. I burned it. You know, I singed it. So you might say, you know, I'm not chayv. It's like, you know, I didn't burn down his, 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 his fruits, his vegetables, his corn or whatever. I didn't burn that down. Chayv there too. The sikhsach or you singed his stones. By stones, he called it sikhsach because he didn't really destroy the stones. You just, you know, blackened them. You, you did that. That's how you chayv even for that. That's why the Torah, even though, again, so even though if it would just say bor in one of the other ones, you could learn out everything else from there. But it said these things in the Torah to teach you each parsha has different words there to teach me, like the case of God. It says, uh, as, um, uh, oh, come off, the pile of corn, the pile, not something which is hidden. And even according to Yuda, if you're high for hidden stuff, you're still this, to teach me that you're high of, for, uh, you know, for burning his plowed field or his rocks. Any damage that's done that way, you're also uh, high for that too. All right, we'll pick it from the top tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you.